Welcome to The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva, and today we're going to get some insight into men's ice hockey at the college level. My guest today is Ron Fogarty. He is the men's ice hockey coach at Princeton University, and welcome to the show. Thanks, Anthony. Great to be here. Sure. So uh, usually I start my guests uh, where they went to college. So where'd you go to school? I went to school at uh, Colgate University back in the, uh, the early 90s, so uh, <laughs> a long time ago. Uh, but uh, it was a great four-year experience. Uh, my uh, major was education. I uh, did not not know what I wanted to do when I went to, uh, to Colgate as a freshman or even as a sophomore, but uh, I wanted to get uh, in the educational field. I thought I wanted to be a, a phys ed teacher and probably in essence that's what I am doing uh, today with my career. Uh, but it was a great four years and um, you know the friends I have met during my time there, I'm still great friends with my classmates and people that are before and after me. Uh, but just dived in 100% and uh, had a great experience and learned a lot of things, good and bad, what to do, what not to do, and uh, very fortunate for those uh, four years at Colgate. So let's go back in time just a little bit. Um, in high school, when did you start thinking about going to college? Was it freshman year, senior year, were mom and dad involved? How did it all begin it, for it, you? It, A lot different from starting Ontario. So being Canadian and uh, going down to the U.S., it, it wasn't on my mind. Uh, being a hockey player, um, I wanted to play major junior, so it's a sense of pro hockey uh, while you're still in high school. Um, but that didn't work out, and that's part of the society up in Canada is to play major junior hockey, not to go to the United States, the NCAA route in, in, uh, for hockey or any sport to stay up in Canada. Uh, at that time, we had grade 13, so we went uh, five years of uh, high school uh -huh. and then only three years of uh, university in Canada. So while I was my second semester um, in grade 13, I was approached by a couple of NCAA schools. Uh, obviously, there was no internet back then. <laughs> uh, landlines uh, were sure. prominent, and uh, trying to figure out what uh, NCAA schools were all about was somewhat difficult. Um, and, and did a couple unofficial visits, and did a, an official visit uh, to Colgate University, and fell in love with it. Just the the atmosphere, uh, the student bodies. Uh, you know, pride with the school, uh, you know, rallying around each student uh, and student athlete each day, uh, the closeness of the community made it uh, something that was desirable. Uh, got home from my official visit and uh, decided to go to Colgate. So it, it happened within probably a two month span. Wow. Uh, so very quickly, and it's a lot different than today uh, recruiting student athletes. You know, you're recruiting in grade nine, grade 10. People want to have uh, their decisions done by their sophomore year, which is uh, Maybe we'll discuss that a little bit later in the show. Uh, but it, it was good being more mature and making that educated decision, yeah. you know, at a little bit older age than you know, 14, 15. I did it when I was 18 years old, so I was a little bit older, uh, freshman going to Colgate. So now you're at Colgate University. How is it uh, playing ice hockey at Colgate? How's the school in general? It, it rule. It, it, uh, probably about 2,600 students, so it's a, a small, uh, tight-knit community. Uh, got to know not just the, the faculty and staff or my other student uh, body, uh, you know, friends. Got to know a lot about the community, you know, people there that I'm still friends with in Hamilton, New York. Uh, see them once a year when Princeton plays at Colgate. <laughs> uh, but it was um, a great time, a great spot to study. You know, every university has its niche, has the, the positive and negatives. And during my time there, it was vast majority of positives. Uh, and it, it's a great spot. Great. Not as good as cool, uh, as Princeton, but uh, still a good spot. So that brings me to my next question: Is um, when you graduate from Colgate, how does one go from graduating from Colgate to becoming the men's ice hockey coach at Princeton University? <laughs> it's a long journey. You know, it, it uh, a lot of people believe to get from one point in their career to a different point. It's it's a, a straight linear line. You know, it, it mine went in a lot of different paths and. Uh, I was very fortunate to um, have the opportunity to become an assistant coach at Colgate uh, one year after graduation. So I ended up oh. coaching, you know, the players I played with, and, uh, and it was difficult because you had to, you know, turn a little bit, still stay yourself, but realize there's more of a harder line. You yeah. know, now you're taking the majority of the side with the coaching staff rather than, you know, saying yes to the players. But I was there for three years and then had the opportunity to go to Clarkson University, which was a scholarship school. Colgate was a financial aid school. And I knew that uh, to move my career forward of becoming one day a head coach, to have scholarship and financial aid uh, schools on my resume would be beneficial. Uh, from there, I went to Bowling Green State University wow. uh, in my seventh year of coaching for five years. And 
that was uh, in a different conference, and it was a losing team. You know, they've had a couple years of uh, under 500, and uh, we did well. And an opportunity at Adrian College came calling in 2008 to start a Division Three program from scratch. There was no rank, no team. Uh, the school was just starting to, to change uh, from a commuter school to be a resident school and uh, recruited 25 freshmen, one junior, one senior. And the first year we ended up winning the league title, uh, won 26 wins and three losses. Wow. And spent seven years at Adrian College and that helped me to get to Princeton four years ago. Uh, so it's, it's a winding road, uh, but along the way you, um, you gather a lot of experiences, negative and positively, uh, to kind of morph you into what you want to do and what you want to be as a coach and how you want to coach and how you want to teach. Sure. Um, so it, it was a long journey and I'm very fortunate to be here at Princeton and especially after the last season, uh, really happy here as well. Sure. So uh, let's get into Princeton University. So let's get into uh, recruiting. What, what type of recruiting, how do you find the student athletes that want to play ice hockey at Princeton University? How's, what's the process that you take? Well, there, there's the, the process from the student athlete. You know, the, uh, a lot of student athletes uh, will email us or, or try to contact us because uh, they're, they're a great desire to go to the best school arguably in the world. Um, with our program, we only have seven slots a year. We can only take in seven uh, freshmen. So we have to be very selective. Uh, you know, speaking with basketball and other sports, in the, their freshmen come immediately after high school. With hockey, there's sometimes one or even two gap years. So they'll go play junior hockey for one or two years and get stronger while still ac being academically uh, engaged in the classroom, taking maybe a couple online courses or uh, community college courses to, to prepare them for the, the rigors of Princeton University. So are they still uh, in high school per se? No, we, we'll recruit them and we just uh, recruited a player who's done grade 12. Okay. Um, you know, there's a lot of, could have went to any Ivy League school and he chose Princeton. Uh, so we'll start a little bit later, you know, as I indicated before, grade 13 is when I you know, made my decision. We'll wait at Princeton to see their floor. So basically saying that when we see them play, uh, you know, are they good enough to be on our roster right now if they don't develop? So we're going to wait until grade 11, grade 12. Uh, we're not going to you know, go after someone in grade 9 or 10 for that reason also because we don't know if they can get into Princeton. Gotcha. So we, we go after a little bit older recruit than the Every other sport, you know, men's hockey is the uh, abnominally for all NCAA sports with a one and two gap years. Um, and majority of our student athletes are now coming from Canada as well, where that is a norm. They take one or two uh, years after high school to, you know, to, to get better. So when they get to a school, they're ready to go. They're not trying to catch up. They're already fully developed and one of the best freshmen out there. Yeah. Um, so when we look for those players, we want to make sure that they can play for us. But more importantly, we want to make sure they're great people, you yeah. know, to, to be at on campus at any school, especially Princeton, we want ambassadors. We want people that are focused not only for the four years here at Princeton, but you know, are very desirable in finding a, something that they're passionate in while they're here and studying and going to class so they can be successful after Princeton, mm -hmm. using us as a springboard, their development academically, socially, and athletically. And um, that's through the screen process with their parents, you know, with their players, with coaches. Uh, so our decision will take maybe on the ice, maybe one day, but as a person for their character, maybe three or four months. Wow. So um, when when they're in these uh, these these gap years, the, is that considered just an extra year or two of high school that they're doing, or are they pretty much out on their own playing ice hockey? Yeah, they've completed their their high school on time. So after their senior year, grade twelve in Canada, and they'll spend one or two years in junior programs, so club programs, mm -hmm. um, against up to 20, 21 year olds. Um, you know, when you get to college, the, the average, you know, a hockey age is about 21 and a half. You know, some seniors are 24 years old. It's a big difference for a 17 year old playing against a 24 year old rather than a 19, 20 year old. Mm. Uh, that's where the game has gone to and that's where it is today. Uh, will it change to true freshmen? I don't think so. So to, to be successful, you need those older players. Wow. And now, uh, also in high, in high school, I, I've heard that um, they have to do certain showcases to, to show colleges like uh, Chicago Night or Boston Night or something like that. Is that something that high school students should be doing if they want to play ice hockey at the, 
at the college level. Okay, you've been uh, studying hockey. That's yeah. good, Anthony. They, uh, th there's a, a great amount of showcases, uh, probably too many in the summertime. Uh, but right now, our, our schedules for myself and my two assistant uh, coaches, we're gone predominantly the month of September you know, in Minneapolis, in Boston, in British Columbia, Ontario, uh, where you can see a lot of teams at one time. Uh, with the high schools, they have a lot of uh, prep school jamborees, and then their showcases are usually around Christmas time in their tournaments. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's easier for us recruiting because you have you know, six to 24 teams at one site. Yeah. Um, but th that's where you get noticed because most of the NCAA schools will flock to those uh, tournaments or showcases. So now, when a student athlete comes to Princeton University, what's a whole year like for ice, men's ice hockey at Princeton? When do they start school? Is it August, September? Uh, what happens? When does the season start? When, when does it end? And what happens after the season as well? It, it's a very long season. It spans both semesters. Um, our players will come to campus. First day of school is, is September 12th, and then they'll start skating on their own uh, September 14th. And then we're allowed to have um, two hour session skill development with them per week until we start up in October. So we'll do that for three w weeks, work on their individual skills, and they'll have ice where they can just jump on the ice between classes or after class. Uh, our season starts middle of October, uh, runs through to Christmas break. We'll have seven days off during Christmas, return and play immediately after. This year we're playing University of Maine, um, yeah. the weekend following Christmas. And they'll stay throughout the time of winter break and uh, the national championships are uh, beginning of April. So it, it, it's very long. Uh, you have to manage that by realizing that uh, two hours a day is a long time you know, sure. to be on the ice. You know, coupled with their studying, you know, and uh, getting caught up if we're away for a weekend uh, with classes. Uh, but it's enjoyable. You know, we make sure that it's fun coming to the rink. And as I indicated before, they, they want to be successful after, have a chance to play pro hockey. Sure. Uh, and, and they continue to work to be a Division One athlete in basketball, hockey, football, fencing. It, it takes a great amount of time uh, to dedicate away from the studying. So you have to be on top of your studies. Sure. You know, we, we only see our players for two and a half hours a day. That's 10% of their time of the day. We want to make sure that when they get to that 10% of the time, they're committed. Yeah. And if they're falling behind in school or they're, 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 they're not feeling good about themselves, you know, they're going to be distracted. So the off the ice is very important you know, to be a part of a long season or even a short season. It's, it's one of the, the, the biggest things about their character that we investigate is their time management skills. Uh, because it is long and you can get behind quick and our guys have done a great job. So so how about the summer months? Do they Are they on their own they, or do they go play ice hockey somewhere else? Uh, they're, they're majority they're on their own. They'll, they'll spend the summertime getting stronger. You know, in the weight room, we had six players this year go to NHL camps. So uh, some, two of them, majority just one, uh, where the, the National Hockey League team, where they end up for the camp, will have a kind of a free look at them for after when they graduate to sign them. Uh, we don't have any uh, NHL draft picks right now. We have uh, free agents, and uh, with our success last year, um, there's six or seven of them out there right now that will may have an opportunity after Princeton to uh, to play hockey before they move into the real world of you know, business and, yeah. and what you and I do. So, so how about uh, the type of kids? Um, do you see a lot of kids from Canada, or do you see? There's more U.S. kids, or do kids from overseas actually come to schools like Princeton University? Uh, well, all, all three, like the, the Canada, U.S., and overseas, you know, th there's spots at different institutions for them. Uh, when we came to Princeton, our staff, four years ago, uh, we had to get away uh, from the prep schools because Harvard, Yale, Cornell were doing a great job, and we were, we were not getting the top student-athlete from those areas. So we went and created a different pipeline back up in Canada where myself and my assistant coaches were comfortable, comfortable recruiting at, at our other spots. Um, so we started attracting the top players that you know, want to go to Ivy League school in Canada, British Columbia, Alberta. Wow. And now we've re, uh, regained traction in the prep schools where now we're getting those top student athletes again because we're starting to win. Uh, and the culture that we have around uh, the rank. Um, so it, it's, there's no one set area. We'll go anywhere and everywhere to attract the best person you yeah. know, who's also a good hockey player. So how about uh, size? Does size matter? Do you have to be 6'5 and, you know, skating like a, a rabbit? Or uh, can you be small and stocky and, and still 
do well at ice hockey. What, what type of uh, players are good at ice hockey? Yes, for everything you just said. <laughs> you can be six foot five, you can be five foot four. You know, we have a five foot five player on our team who's done extremely well. It, it's about skill. You know, can you skate? Can you skill? Uh, do you have a great skill package? Can you play well with others? Are you a great teammate? Um, so it, the size is irrelevant. Maybe 10 years ago it was. It was bigger, stronger, but now it's faster, smarter, mm -hmm. and we look for smart hockey players. And how about uh, grades? What are the type of grades? I know Princeton University is a tough school to get into, so um, what are the type of grades that, that these student athletes uh, need to have? Top your class. You know, it's, it, 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 there's, just because you're a hockey player doesn't give you a free pass to come to Princeton University. You know, we, we want the best student athletes, top their class, that have great time management, you know, that get ahead of their studies so they can spend two and a half hours away from classes to, to be dominant and mm -hmm. keep getting better every day in hockey. Um, so just because you can put a pair of skates on and hold a stick, you know, it doesn't give you a free entry to Princeton. We want, we want the best student athletes. You know, it, it's a very demanding school. Uh, it, it's a, a great school to earn an unbelievable degree. Sure. And we want to make sure that everyone who steps into Baker rank that goes to Princeton University has an opportunity to succeed. And if you're not a good student coming in, you're not gonna be a good student going out. So um, we look for the, the top in their class. So now how about uh, the amount of games? You said that it, it, it's, it spans both uh, semesters. What's the amount of games um, that these students are playing in the, in the fall, in the spring? Uh, you can't be just playing the Ivy League schools. You gotta Correct. be playing a, yeah. a lot of the Division One top top schools? Yeah, we're in the ECAC, and you know, it's made up of the other Ivies and then uh, six other uh, other schools. Um, so our, our league schedule is uh, 22 games, and then we find seven non-conference games. Uh, this year we'll end up be playing Penn State uh, at Wells Fargo in Philadelphia. Wow. We played them a couple of years ago, had 17,000 people, wow. 16,000 Penn State fans, 1,000 Princeton <laughs> fans. <laughs> um, and and, and uh, next year, uh, in 2019, Thanksgiving, we're gonna go to Belfast to play in a tournament over there. Uh -huh. So you, you can uh, you know, find some interesting non-conference games away from your uh, league schedule, and then playoffs. You know, We made a little bit of a deep run this year uh, and had seven more games added to our schedule because of winning the ECAC and going to the national tournament. Uh, and, and those are predominantly on Fridays and Saturdays uh, throughout the year. Um, but it, it's, it's a manageable schedule with the games. I like to see us play more, but uh, you know, it's pretty demanding to practice all the time and go to school, so you have to find the right times to play. So now, a lot of parents always say, it's all about the sport, it's not about the school. How do you combat that? What's what's the way Princeton does things with these student athletes? Yeah, well, if, if it's all about the sport, they should just stay up in Canada or go play major junior, you know, because there doesn't have the schooling component to that. Um, we, we want the person to be whole. You know, you're, you're getting a diploma, you know, and earning a degree from Princeton, not from hockey. You know, hockey is a club sport. It's an opportunity to be part of a club during your extracurricular times. Uh, we understand as a staff during you know, midterm exams during stressful points of the season that we may not practice on a Monday, Tuesday. The rest of you know the nation may be practicing, but less is more. We want to make sure that, as I said before, when they get to the rank, that they're ready to go. If there's an exam that uh, they're studying for, they need some more time. Uh, we'll let that player miss practice, and it's not going to affect them when we decide who's uh, in the lineup on Friday or Saturday. Um, hockey is the most important thing to them today, but they realize in four, three, two, and one year from now that that degree is the most important thing. Sure. And and so do you see a lot of uh, students uh, end up in the NHL from Princeton University, or do they just go into the work workforce like a good majority of the people that, that are out there? Uh, we have a couple handfuls of uh, alums who made it to the National Hockey League. Uh, there might be more in the near future, uh, but those handful and majority of the more in the near future are going to be business people. You know, it, it, the, the National Hockey League career, you know, is maybe a couple of years, three, four years on average. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're acquiring a degree and uh, knowledge right now, so hopefully they can utilize that money and spend it wisely and, and utilize their connections and social skills to meet people along the way uh, if they make it to the National Hockey League to create business opportunities for them uh, upon their retirement. Uh, it's, it's still the business world. You know, if you're playing in uh, professional sports, you know, it, it's the same thing. Uh, you have to make sure what you're doing 
is great, you know your daily habits are exceptional, that got you to that place and keeps you in that place. And it's the same if you're, you're working you know, a nine to five job, you have to be a great person and continue to be the best person for that organization. Uh, and that's what we want, just, just great people and great people lead to championships. Now, another thing that parents always bring up is financial aid, money at the school. Um, I know Princeton University doesn't have scholarships, but there is financial aid at all the schools in the United States. Um, how does Princeton work with the parents and the students? We, we at Princeton, you know, my last four years, I've realized that there's a lot of resources that help us in the recruiting process. Um, we set up interviews with our financial aid office and they deal one-on-one. -on -one. It's not over the phone, it's not over the internet. Um, it's a very personable and they discuss, you know, the financial aid packages that are available. Um, we haven't lost a player because of financial aid. You know, it, it's something that uh, the school gives back so much more. You know, and, and it's a lot of time, speaking of a lot of the parents, it's as a child, you know, that's your biggest asset. Sure. And, and you've gone to Montessori school, you know, you're going to the best high schools possible. When you have the opportunity to go to the best institution in the world, it's going to work out. And, uh, but our financial aid office does a great job and they do all that stuff on their own. So um, the biggest thing for ice hockey from a lot of parents, they also say is cost. Uh, skates cost money, yeah. pads cost money. Um, does the university help them with that as well for, for skating and pads and things of that yeah, sort? Yeah, it's, it's like any other sport. Once you get to Princeton, you know, you're, you're head to toe, you're covered with uh, the safety equipment, you know, equipment to make, make you succeed. Um, similar to basketball, they're going to get the shoes, football, you're going to get the pads. Same, same with, uh, with, with our program, you're, you're fitted head to toe, you know, on and off the ice to, to help you succeed in that sport. Um, it is a very expensive uh, sport coming up through high school, through minor hockey, um, and it's, it's something where a lot of parents invest a lot of time, energy, and money. And, but uh, at the end of the day, if you have a chance to go to Princeton, you know, it's, it's money, time, and energy worth well spent. Yeah, and and uh, a big thing is uh, camps, clinics. Do you, do you advise uh, uh, the high school kids to to try to go to these different type of uh, camps or clinics or things of that sort? I do. I think it, it's everyone's different. You know, I, I there's a lot of players that go to a camp every weekend, and that's wrong. You know, you want to have a little downtime, let mom and dad enjoy the summer, and especially on weekends. You just have to be selective. What's the best interest for you? You know, help. What's going to help give you that exposure to Division One and Division Three coaches? Uh, so it, it's all about individual preference. Um, one or two a year is good. I think a lot of people overdo it because they believe they're going to miss out when they're not really missing out on anything because the majority of the recruiting does occur during the fall and winter months. Great. So we're coming to the end of our show, and usually I ask my guests uh, what advice you want to give to the parents and their sons that want to go to Princeton University for ice hockey, what advice would you like to give them? Well, the advice that we give everybody is, is that you are you. You know, especially when you see Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, uh, people post that they're going away to school in grade nine or grade 10. It, it's that person's journey. You know, don't look over your shoulder or don't be comparing yourself to someone else who has an opportunity to go to a different school. Uh, create your own trail. Um, worry about what you can worry about and that's just being a great person, working hard, and if it works out, great. If it doesn't, there's some other school that will take you, Division One, Division Three, And most importantly, you know, hockey ends sometime for everyone. You know, if it ends a little bit earlier than you expected, go to school, get that best degree that you can. You know, it's a sport, it's not a livelihood. Um, but just, just do what you can do and worry about what you can control. Great. Well, thank you very much for okay. coming on the show. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time.